Hello and welcome back to the podcast. I am back from Norway. I have lots of knitting to show you. I've got something that arrived in the post while I was away and some events coming up in April to talk about. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell yarn through my website yarnaddict.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. Okay, so I'm back from Norway. I'm wearing my new sweater that I finished just before, before I went to Norway, I think, for a few weeks before. I have really worn this one a lot. I haven't washed it, steamed it, anything. Um, I could probably do with giving it a bit of steam really because it looks a little bit creased I'm not sure why this is the same as my pink one that I wear a lot um, but it is slightly shorter and the sleeves are not as wide as they were in my pink one um, I still haven't written up the pattern for this I will get around to it I think at some point um, I'm having second thoughts about it but I'm not going to talk about that today because I've got lots of other stuff to talk about lots of knitting to talk about so I arrived back from Norway last Thursday last week instead of a podcast we had a vlog from Norway where I took you around three of the yarn shops I went to uh, both tour in Oslo a couple other walks and just what I was knitting while I was away um, so if you missed that do go and watch it so I got back very late on Thursday evening last week it, today's Tuesday morning got back very very late Thursday evening like 10 o'clock at night um, and I didn't do a lot on Friday I did a tiny bit of work I wrote my newsletter and I just checked that I had everything packed and ready for my workshop on Saturday I printed all my notes and packed everything before I went to Norway but I just double checked that I had everything and then on Saturday I was out all day teaching at the knitting hotel in Dawlish and Sunday I didn't do a lot yesterday I was working and this morning I've been working taking this afternoon off to go to Plymouth because my daughter is home uh, my youngest daughter is home this week um so it's been busy since I've been back um but I don't feel like I've, I've done quite a bit of knitting I think but I don't feel like I've got a lot of knitting done but we'll get on to that in a minute So let me show you what arrived while I was away first. So when I was in Norway, I saw Jane Crowford of Janie Crow. Um, she does amazing crochet blankets. I think it's mostly blankets. They're kind of motifs, but they're just spectacular. And she shared um, a thing on her Instagram that she's doing a collaboration with Emma Ball, who is known for like textile stuff, I think, homewares, stationery, that kind of thing. So the parcel arrived um before i got back so i got i could have bought everything in the collection because it was all fantastic but i bought a project bag because we all know i need more project bags not i have so many project bags this is quite a big one so this will be enough for a sweater project i think i think it's like similar size to my hoey and co or probably even a bit bigger um so that could easily fit a sweater, sweater project especially if you're on circular needles I guess if it's a very thick um, yarn, maybe not, but I think that would fit the sweater project for me. Um, most of my project bags are quite a bit smaller, so even though I thought when this one arrived, I thought it's probably a bit big. It's probably a good thing because I have so many small project bags. Um, but it is one of, uh, oh, it says on the back, I didn't realise that. It's the uh, Mystical Lantern pattern by Janie Crow. That is fabulous. I love that. And then I also got a little notepad. Is that the same pattern? Yes, it is. Mystical lantern pattern. Different colour scheme, I think. 
no it might just, no it might be the same color scheme just the way it's printed off so this is just bits of paper that you can tear off and it has the um pattern printed in the background and then i also got this one which is a um magnetic notepad um the only place we can put a magnet in our house is on our boiler in the kitchen because our fridge is covered by a wooden door so i don't know whether i'm going to put this in the kitchen and just keep it in my office for like to-do lists and stuff so i really like that although they're both quite good fun there are stitch markers in the collections and other things as well i think but i managed to restrict myself to those items but i do really like them uh, even though i don't crochet as much as i knit i do still like crochet at Oslo Airport last Thursday, I cast on for a new pair of socks. So I bought this yarn in Norway and it is very, very, very bright pink. I divided it into two balls. I split it in half before I left Norway. And then uh, at the airport, I cast on for a pair of socks. So the yarn is, let me just get the label out, is Rico Design Neon Socks 4 Ply. And the colorway is called Oh, the colorway is color two um so it's like a neon pink i have it in my um pouch i got from uh birgit michelson day et day et i don't know um it's a brand that's quite popular in norway i don't think maybe it's a danish brand but i'm not sure but they do lots of bags and things and there's a shop in the shopping center that we usually go shopping at that sell their bags and i got this like quilted pouch because I have one that's not quilted like this size they often used for sock knitting but I couldn't find it so I got one that was quilted um because I like little pouches like that they're quite useful but we had quite a long time at the airport because I like to arrive at the airport quite early um I don't like rushing through an airport so we had breakfast we did a bit of shopping and sat around watching the planes go by and knit so I cast on for a pair of toe-up socks. I'm using my Rose Roseland sock pattern. I have another pattern called Rose Craddock, but that's a shawl. So these are my Roseland toe-up sock pattern, and it has a lace pattern. Now, on the sample, the lace patterns are, you do like four, eight rows of lace, and then four rows of stocking stitch, so like here. But I got a bit bored and decided to do a bit more lace in the middle. Um, just for fun of it um so i knitted on that at the airport and on the plane so by the time we landed that's how much i knitted i think i did a little bit of knitting on it on the last train journey so in norway we had two trains to get to the airport one to get into oslo and one to get out of oslo towards the airport then obviously a plane to london and then train into london um from sunstead and then train from paddington london paddington to place in Devon called Tiverton and then there was a replacement bus from there to Plymouth and then there was another train from there to uh, where I live in Cornwall so I think I knitted on this at the airport on the plane and on the last train journey from Plymouth um or was there a Plymouth station I can't remember so I think I'm at the point now where I need to measure to make sure um I know where to increase for the gusset because this one has a gusset increase I must admit, I've gotten so used to doing socks with afterthought heel, and I really like that because you can just knit the full length um, of the foot and then put in a waist yarn and then keep knitting. So I need to just double check um, if I'm ready to increase for the gusset and start doing that um, because I think it's long enough. Which is why I haven't touched it since I got home because I just haven't had time to to look at it um, another project i was working on on the way home is my uh, cow which is in my color clutch bag i yesterday i was going to um take this off the needles on a piece of um barber cord and block it because i want to check that it's big enough i kind of i think i mentioned this on in the vlog that i've kind of done this like flap the front and the back at the bottom which would like hang down here to go under your coat but i'm not sure whether i like it so what i'm going to do is um i think i need the flap to be a bit bigger i don't know i'm going to I... take this off the needles onto the barbecue cord wet properly wet block it and see how it ends up and then make a decision what i was thinking was if i decide i don't like these bits 
I can cut it here and ravel around, take that off and then knit on a garter stitch edging up here. And then if I decide to do something like this, but a bit different, I could add it on here. So it would be like a top down cowl. Um, I haven't decided yet, but my plan was to try and finish this for today. But yesterday um, I started recording a what I knit in a week yesterday. So I was talking about what my main knitting priorities was for this week. So I was discussing this in that video and I thought I must block it before I make any decisions. And then I didn't block it um, because I was too lazy. So um, that's one of the jobs I need to do this week. done any work on Simon's socks I was working on these before we went to Norway and oh I'm still on the first sock I thought I finished the first sock so I don't think I've got much left of the first sock so that's again I split the yarn in two that's how much I've left of the yarn that's the full size ball so we're going out this afternoon so I think I'm going to take this with me and see if I can finish these socks today I've kept the other ball in the bag so that if I finish these socks I can cast them for the other socks straight away because I really like to get these finished before I do too much work on my pink ones um it's because they've been on the needles for a while I'm not loving knitting them because I don't really like the color it's not my kind of color Simon chose it when we we're in Norway at Christmas um it's not my kind of color so we're going out this afternoon so I think I'm going to take this with me so that if I get any chance to knit, I know I will have a chance to knit because we're going, my daughter's uh, giving blood first. So we have to sit and wait around while she gives blood. So I'll be able to knit then. Uh, and I will try and see if I can get the first sock finished this afternoon while we're out. And um, maybe cast on the second one. The other project I've been working on mostly since I've been home is my pixie cardigan. Just wound another ball, another mini skein. So this one I am using a bit of bits and pieces from Pixie Yarns. Um, I'm using two full 100 gram skeins and two 100 gram mini skein sets. I think the background's gone a bit dark. Um, it's the light, it keeps going sunny and cloudy. But hopefully you can see me and what I'm knitting and that's the main thing. I can't be bothered to go and turn the light on. So, um, right, so this is my cardigan. That's the back of it. It's knitted all in one piece from the top down. And since last week, I have knitted from where that monkey marker is up to here. So that is, let's just see how many rows that is. I got like 360 stitches per row. That is. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. 26 rows, 360 stitches. We're talking 9,360 stitches. So nearly 9,500 stitches. Because I feel like I haven't knitted a lot on this. It feels, progress feels really slow. But that's nearly 9,500 stitches. That's quite a lot. Yesterday I knitted, hang on. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 uh, rows, which is 5,400 5, stitches. So quite a lot. Um, even though I'm like, feeling I'm not getting much done, it's I'm doing okay. Anyway, the blue, I had this like variegated blue, which is the main colour through this section. And then I've been striping in different mini skeins. Um, I finished that blue now. I got <laughs> that's how much I had left. I've been trying to leave like a tiny ball of each. Um and I've been putting them in this ball so I, as you can see there's not much left of each colour. But um yeah, this one. That's how much I had. I don't know, half a meter, three quarters of a meter. So not a lot. Um I have I was going to once I finished the yarn, the main skein, the hundred gram skein. I was just going to use mini skeins for the rest of it. I have two mini skeins currently in use. Then I have one, two, three, four mini skeins left. Plus I have that much left from the um, section at the top. 
hang on that was the main color at the top of the cardigan i probably should have striped that in here but i didn't so i got that's i think that's like nearly 20 grams uh, or at least 15 grams so i think i'm going to use that at some point um all the yarns i've used are one-offs um but i looked on the i've been looking on the pixie yarns website lately um just in case i wanted more yarn and it's been offline because she's been preparing for and vending at uh, east anglia yarn festival which was a couple of weeks ago i think two three weeks ago anyway her website reopened this weekend so i went and had a look and i ordered two skeins one looks very similar to this blue very good ones i use as the main one of the main colors and one i think looks a little bit similar to this one this bright pink one here not the main purple one but this one um so we'll see what they're like when they arrive they've been shipped i don't know whether they'll be here today or tomorrow but they have been shipped so i want to see what they're like and i might use one or both of those i need to check how much i got left of the body probably not a lot i need to probably try it on and see how long i want it and then the sleeves currently come down to just before the elbow and i would like them at least three quarter length so um if i have enough yarn in the right color i will add some to the sleeves i do also have a mini skein set which is um speckled i had this in a solid smooth version like a just a sock yarn version and then i also got this sparkly speckled version i don't know if i want to add any sparkly yarn in so i haven't quite decided about that yet and then i do also have this one which i started knitting with after the purple bit at the top but i wasn't sure they went with the other colors so i ripped it out so i do have that i don't think that goes with the blues i think it went with the purple but i don't think it goes with the blues so I don't think I'm going to use that, but I do have that. I may have other sock yarns that are the same base as these. I don't know. Um, but I'll see what the yarn, see how far I can get with the yarn I've got and see what the yarn I got from um, Pixie Yarns, what that looks like when it arrives. So let's talk about some events that are coming up in April. On the 9th of April, I'm teaching a spinner yarn. I'm teaching finishing techniques. Last time I was at spinner yarn, uh, that workshop was fully booked. So I'm assuming that's still the case. But if you're interested, contact spinner yarn. I'll put their details below and ask if they are still fully booked or if they have a waiting list. Uh, so that's 9th of April. Um, all things sweater finishing, sewing up, short row shoulder shaping, three needle caster, picking up stitches, one row buttonholes, loads and loads of stuff. Um, so mattress stitch, obviously. Um, everyone who goes on that workshop thinks it's really, really useful. A week later, I think it is. Yeah, a week later on the 16th of April, I'm doing a brioche basics workshop. So if you want to learn how to do basic two color brioche rib, we will start with the basics, then we'll go into um, syncopated brioche. And then depending on how each individual person gets on, some people may move on to increases and decreases. Some people may spend the whole day just getting hang of the basic two color brioche rib and syncopated brioche. I think it's really useful for brioche to really grab, get hold of the basics before you start to move in onto something more complicated. Brioche knitting is not easy and I think it's really useful to get the basics properly and then start moving on. So basic two color brioche rib is like at the bottom here, like that. It's a different color on the other side. And then when you start doing increases and decreases, you can make really interesting patterns. So what I normally do is I start teaching the basics and then in the afternoon I see how people get on and some two maybe a couple of people in each workshop can move on and have a go at some increases and decreases but most people just stick with learning the basics because i want them to have a really good 
foundation before they move on. And then also in April, we have Wonderwall. So Wonderwall is in Wales, Wonderwall, Wales, uh, Saturday 28th and Sunday, no, Saturday 27th and Sunday 28th of April at the Royal Welsh Showground in Bill Wells in Mid Wales. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So I'm really excited about Wonderwall, especially because we had to cancel our last show, which would have been Unravel. Um, had to cancel that because of a family bereavement. So I'm really looking forward to Wonderwall in Wales at the end of April. It's, I think, five weeks away. I counted yesterday. Might be four weeks. So I need to sit down this week sometime and actually make a list of all the things I need to do and come up with a plan. Um, I'm not going to order my yarn yet because I don't need to. I may have to order some yarn next week. Uh, but most of it I can wait a week or two to order, I think. And I don't need to order books because I ordered those for <laughs> Unravel. So I've got copies of my books. I need to look at any kind of Nipro gadgets, notions that I want to order, make a list of those. And I need to make a list of the patterns that I need to print because I print my patterns myself now. Easter weekend this weekend, we don't have a lot of plans. Uh, I think we're going to be on our own for most of it. My daughter is home at the moment. We'll go back to Wales on Saturday morning and the other one's not coming home till Monday, I don't think so. We're probably going to have a day out with my daughter is home on Friday and then have a quiet weekend. Go out a bit if we can, if the weather's good. Um, Cornwall can get very busy um, during Easter holidays because it's a popular holiday destination and if the weather's good, it can get quite busy because Easter is so early this year and the weather's not been great. I don't think it's going to be too busy. So hopefully we'll get out and about a bit this weekend and I'll get a lot of knitting done. I have been swatching for a new design. I'm not going to show you those swatches. I'll talk about it next week. Um, but I'm planning what to cast on for myself after I finish this cardigan. But I'm trying to be really strict and make sure I finish this cardigan uh, before I cast on anything else. I do also have a couple of magazine designs in April that I'm still waiting for the yarn for. So I need to plan in time to do those. One of those I have to knit myself, possibly both. I don't know yet. Um, I've just been chasing up the yarn this morning. Um, so hopefully that will be here soon. I'm expecting the parcel for the third instalment of the Spectrum Fiber Club uh, this week, I think. Um, and I'm also expecting the Pixie Yarn to turn up this week. So hopefully next week I'll have a bit of new yarn arrivals to show you. I have got a very exciting project I'm working on at the moment. Um, I can't tell you the details yet, but do subscribe to my newsletter because that's where all the details will be revealed first. So go to my website yarnaddict.co.uk and click on the subscribe link. There's also a link below as well. Because I'm working on something really exciting. Um, it involves a knitting retreat somewhere in southern Europe. And it's not for two years. It is in um, going to be in May 2026. So it's a bit of head but it's a place that books up really quickly so we have to book ahead but I'm really excited we're just finalizing the details so hopefully I will have the booking website in the next week or two I hope um because I'm really really excited about it so I will reveal that it will be a knitting retreat and a uh, week there's lots of knitting uh, included in the retreat obviously um but there's also loads of other exciting excursions and fun stuff and it's a country I've been to several times before, but I haven't been to that part of the country before. So I'm really excited about it as well. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please, please leave me a comment and tell me what's on your needles at the moment. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing.